He got red on you. Uh, dude? I'm pretty sure he ate the whole rainbow. <laughs> Hi there, I'm the Anevangelist, and I want to make anime appeal to a broader audience. And today, I'm reaching out to zombie comedy fans everywhere with the spiritual successor to Shaun of the Dead, ZOM 100, Bucket List of the Dead. Yeah, I know, it's August. Look, if the big box stores can have their Halloween crap out already, I can do a series on horror anime. Starting with ZOM 100. It starts out with Akira being the fresh meat at his first post-college job. He murdered his opponents in collegiate rugby and devoured his academics, all to land this dream job, just to be forced to pull a double all-nighter on his first day. During a three-year montage, we slowly see Akira's life and color eroded until he starts to hope a missile would hit his office building, just so he could get a day off. Instead of capital F freedom served up hypersonic courtesy of the US of A, it's zombies that give Akira his much needed PTO. Relishing his newfound autonomy, Akira jots down his deferred dreams and gets to striking him off his list. Because who knows when it might be his turn to crave some brains. But what makes ZOM 100 like Shaun of the Dead? Both have plenty of commentary on capitalism, and we will get to that. But their humor, namely the embrace of dark humor, was the first thing I noticed. ZOM 100 avoids the British passion for cursing, while capturing the spirit of getting mum, killing Phil, picking up Liz, heading to the Winchester, and waiting for it all to blow over. Specifically when Akira is trying to power through his career's rocky start. Instead of focusing on that, he recognizes his company's benefits. We get annual paid vacations and our anniversary day off as well as mental health days. That being said, I've never seen anybody use them. The spirit of competition. Unpaid overtime last month. About 150 hours. That's nothing. Talk to me once you're at 200. And the opportunity for mentorship. Where the hell do you think you're going, damn it? The circumstances and cinematography of ZOM 100 has Shaun of the Dead's sensibilities, too. Akira and Shaun both stagger around like zombies due to their lifestyle and decisions. Both are put into uncomfortable situations due to their bosses. And at the start of the stories, our protagonists are having to confront what everyone aging into their mid to late 20s does. But I know you don't want to be here forever. You know, I got things I want to do in my life. When? Along with that confrontation of mortality, Sean and Akira are having to deal with the expectation of others, too. Sean wants to be a steadfast boyfriend to Liz, a good son to his mother, roommate to Pete, all while Ed sings him the siren call of video games and drunken 4am DJ parties. Akira realizes that if he quits, he might end up somewhere worse. And if he takes time off, his teammates are going to suffer. The zombie invasion lets both of them realize self-actualization. Sean makes peace with his stepfather, cuts the cord with his mother, and Liz's annoying friends kind of resolve themselves. And he still gets to play video games with Ed in the garden shed. Akira's road to empowerment is ongoing. We're only a few episodes into the series, but it looks like it'll be a lot different. The easiest difference to spot is how our protagonists discover the zombies. We get hints to the impending zombie disaster in both, so TV spots, people getting sick, but Sean's zombie revelation is a slow descent into absurdity, starting with the routine jaunt to the convenience store, once full of daily life, now ominous, to the discovery of a girl in the backyard, and ultimately, zombie decapitation by shitty vinyl? Akira's is a little more jarring. Leaving for work, he notices his landlord sent him a late payment notice, because why should your employer get to be the only one to squeeze blood out of you? only to discover that the leasing office door is wide open, with a zombie having his breakfast. Ba -da 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 -da. Color snaps back into focus, and the next few minutes put Akira's rugby training to the test, as he races upstairs, through doors, and over fences. ZOM 100's first episode and Shaun of the Dead are a joyous retreat from years of work and monotony to the pursuit of self-fulfillment. So while Shaun suffers some losses, he ultimately ends up high-fiving Maslow as he ascends the hierarchy of needs. Whereas ZOM 100's second episode slaps your beautiful face with some consequences. 
Akira crosses off a couple of self-care items on the bucket list, cleaning out his hoarder situation, and then a beer run for some day drinking. Heck, he even offers to pick up some stuff for some trapped neighbors. What a chad. He meets another survivor who calls out his irresponsibility for risking the trip for beer, only to be saved by her from a runaway truck. Zombie drivers, am I right? And Akira gets another grim reminder of life's fleeting nature when he drops off his neighbor's stuff. He does some editing in his bucket list. This edition hit me pretty hard. But in an attempt to avoid any more spoilers, it's clear by the end of the second episode that this isn't just a zombie comedy. The predominant flavor is hilarity, but there's hints of tobacco, black currant, and the anti-work subreddit. I mean, the commentary on 21st century capitalism isn't a shock, right? Well, maybe you were still getting popcorn at the beginning of Shaun of the Dead, or maybe you had to hit the potty before seeing the end. The fact that the mobile deceased retained their primal instincts make them ideal recruitment for the service industry. It's smattered throughout the movie, though. Sean and Ed's roommate complains that he has to work on a Sunday morning, calling them both losers. Sean's dad... He's not my dad. Sorry, mother's husband routinely chides him and attempts a final heartfelt moment about trying to lead him by example. Liz wants Sean to break out of his comfort zone, ironically turning to that exact thing at the end of the movie, and society at large wants Sean to conform to their needs. Sean is a... Uh, hey, Sean, how old are you? I'm 29. Right, thanks. Sean is 29 while Akira is probably 25 at the oldest. For perspective, I switched to an IT career at 25 and was married at 29. Four years is a long time in your 20s, which is why I think Akira's attitude towards work is so easily shaped into the dysfunction it becomes. After the first all-nighters, he only briefly doubts his place of work, eventually becoming the ultimate bootlicker. And if you think that's not enough for the bootlicker label, even in the midst of being chased by zombies, his first thought was... I mean, if this keeps up, I'm gonna be late for work! <laughs> that consequential second episode opens with a corporate fascist nightmare. <laughs> I'm sorry, Chief, I'll get back to work! <laughs> Does that resonate with anyone? Say, the overachievers that still wake up in a cold sweat dreaming about exams? <laughs> Which reminds me. When I was just out of college, I stumbled across a debate on how whichever political party was in or out of office shaped whether zombies or vampires were the cool thing. Yeah, supposedly if you're a Democrat out of power, you fear zombies because they're a ravenous mob that will destroy diversity. And if the Republicans are out of power, you're scared of vampires because they're religion-hating sexual deviants. Ironically, both monsters have to eat regular people to survive. Removing subtlety. Both of these shows make the same point. Modern society wants you to be complacent, and if they could work you as a zombie, they would. A man? Yeah, fuck him. Looking back, I'm pretty sure SpongeBob paved the way for the messaging of Zom 100. She's forgotten what it's like to live on the outside, to not be in prison. Coming to bed, honey? Yes, dear. Hey, you outran the zombies. Good job. Have a helping of Zom 100, Bucket List of the Dead, for ideas on what you can do next. Links in the description on where you can stream it. And whether you're a nostalgic Gen Xer, Edgar Wright lover, or completely new to it, there's info on where you can stream Shaun of the Dead, too. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have to get back to watching anime. Brains. I mean, waifus.